Hi there, my name is Dr. Ray Lopez and I will be teaching the online uh, sensation and perception class for the spring of 2018. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I have been teaching for, uh, this will be my 30th year of teaching, <laughs> so it's been a long time. Um, I've taught a lot of different classes in many different places. Um, this is the third or fourth year I've taught this class online. Um, I don't particularly enjoy teaching classes online because um, there's not a lot of inter interaction with the students. Um, but it's one of the realities of life now, you know, online classes. So, you know, my goal is to give you all of the tools that you would need to, um, uh, to learn as much about this topic as possible. Um, so what is this topic? It's sensation and perception. Uh, the objectives of the course are to provide you guys the, opp the opportunity to uh, understand all of the major topics in sensation and perception. Uh, it's a very old field in experimental psychology. It is a very um, complex field. Sensation and perception is very complex because it combines uh, psychological concepts with biology and physics. So, um, a lot of students have, uh, <laughs> some students have difficulty with the class because it is, it is a tough class, or the topic is tough, I should say. Um, but we're going to be talking about the visual system, hearing, um, chemical senses like taste and, and uh, smell, uh, the cutaneous senses, the kinesthetic senses, uh, all of the major sensory systems of the, uh, of, uh, the mammalian uh, critters will be um, covered in this class. The prereq for this class is that you have to have completed uh, experimental psychology. Uh, that's a pretty strong prerequisite because uh, the reading for this course assumes that you understand basic concepts around um, doing experiments. Things like uh, dependent variables, independent variables, and concepts that you, those types of concepts that you learned in experimental psychology. Uh, three credit hours. Um, there is also access. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have the course on Blackboard, um, and. Uh, um, Pretty much everything you're going to need is going to be available through Blackboard. Now, the content for the course, which is primarily going to be slide decks, PowerPoint slide decks that are in PDF format, and videos, those are located off of Blackboard. Uh, I actually have a link in Blackboard that will take you to another site that has links to all of the content that you're going to need to uh, uh, to uh, for this course. So we'll we will review that briefly in this video. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and open up the syllabus. Uh, so if, if you haven't gotten a copy of the syllabus already, uh, go ahead and open that up on your. Um, device or if you want to be old school print it out <laughs> um, and I'm going to be on the first page of my syllabus uh, and starting with um, the topic of office hours uh, so I'm going to have office hours uh, that will be um, uh, they're posted there at the top of the syllabus they're going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. So you are more than welcome to come by and chat um, if you have any questions you want to ask me. Uh, the other thing too, uh, one of the some of the feedback that I have gotten on this course, particularly last semester, is that um, you know, basically in this class, all I do is I, I give you the, uh, the, 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 uh, the textbook, the lectures, the tests, and then have at it. <laughs> you know, it's, you, you know, as long as you get all four tests completed by the end of the last day of the semester, you're good, right? 
I, have, I had tried in the past several other things. I had tried, for example, having um, uh, deadlines for each test, you know, throughout the semester. Uh, I tried having, um, tried to get students to interact online in the Blackboard system. Uh, I used a tool up until last semester, I used a tool called Telegram, which is a little, uh, like a chat app that you can put on your phone. So I tried a bunch of different things to try to get uh, some sort of interaction going and nothing really worked. Um, I think what students don't want is more work, you know, so like I could have, for example, made some assignments, uh, you know, to get to, to, so that you and I could be more connected or that you could be more connected with your, um, uh, with your uh, other students taking the class. I could have done that. Um, but for one, th for one thing, this semester, this spring, I have 160 of you guys, <laughs> two sections. That's a lot of students. And that's just way too many students to be grading stuff, right? To be grading like, you know, weekly assignments and things like that. Um, that uh, just FYI, in case you know you're wondering, like, well, what else does this guy have to do now? Um, I, I'm a, I am an adjunct professor at UTSA. I am not a, a full-time professor. So my actual full-time job, I actually work for IBM. I'm, a, I work in the IBM Watson Group uh, in their artificial intelligence uh, technology at IBM. Uh, so that's my day job. So this is a, you know, this is a job that I have in the, uh, in the side. By the way, if that's, if you can hear my cat meowing at me, he's, you know, he's meowing. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, so that, that's a lot of students, right? That is just a lot of students for, even for a full-time uh, teacher to have. So what I decided to do this semester, aside from office hours, the other thing I'm going to do, uh, and I will, uh, put this in Blackboard, but the other thing I'm going to do is if, um, if at least five of you, if at least five students want to get together for a review or study session to go over any of the chapters or any of the topics in any of the chapters, I should say, if you want to do that, uh, the five of you get together, um, and communicate with me through email and we will set up a time that we can do that where, where we can meet on campus or we can even meet off campus if you want I you know I don't care like at a Starbucks or something I, I you know wherever um, and we can meet um, at a uh, at a mutually agreed upon time to, to, to go over stuff and really also just to kind of like, you know, get to know each other a little bit, you know, to add a little bit of human element to this, to this online ordeal, right? So keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Um, you know, I, I will put in Blackboard a forum where you can, can, you know, where you can post messages in that forum looking for study partners if you want to get together uh, and meet up and talk about stuff. You know, even if you want to just have like a, you know, like a session where you just want to get together and just, you know, have a beer or something. I mean, it's okay with me. Um, I'm really trying to encourage a little bit more socialization. Uh, but the intent really is to have, if you want to have a study session. So if, if, if you've got, if you can get five, at least five of you together that are about to have a, let's say for example, you're all about to take the, uh, the, the second exam and uh, you've all decided you want, you're gonna take the second exam at the same time, roughly the same time, you know, within a day or two of each other. So you wanna have a study session a couple of days before the second exam, before you all take that exam. Uh, we can agree to meet somewhere and, uh, and we can get together and, and, and you know, go over some of the, the concepts that maybe you didn't understand um, that, are in the, uh, that are in the book. So, uh, you know, we'll do that. So, you know, please keep that in mind. The next section, office hours, we talked about that. The um, study, study sessions with uh, at least five people, I've mentioned that to you in this video. Now, the next section in the uh, syllabus is the textbook. Uh, this is an online course, so the textbook is basically essential. I mean, you have to have the textbook. 
the textbook is Goldstein and Brockmole 2017, Sensation and Perception, the 10th edition. The information is there in your um, syllabus. It has to be the 10th edition, um, mainly because uh, some of the uh, topics that are questioned in the uh, exams are come from the 10th edition of the book. Um, I would not recommend using an earlier edition. Um, some people have, have tried and, and have you know done okay, but I would strongly recommend you just go ahead and get the 10th edition. The Cengage Mind Tap um, content that comes with uh, the book is not required. I what, that was another one of the many things I tried to do in the past was to use that content, and it just turned out to be um, a clusterfuck of. <laughs> problems using Cengage so I just decided I'm not going to use it anymore but you can use it if you want to spend the 95 bucks or whatever it is to use Cengage mind tap you're more than welcome to uh, the the content is pretty helpful actually let's go to the second page of the um, syllabus um, policy and lectures is at the top of the second page now the lectures are in video format uh, I actually have all the lectures posted in YouTube. So each chapter has f anywhere from four to seven videos uh, on YouTube for each chapter. And I have the link there uh, for my YouTube channel, which has all of the uh, chapters organized, in, all of those videos organized into chapters uh, that you can watch. The links are, will be posted. There'll be a link to go to the links in Blackboard. Um, each chapter is covered by five to seven lecture videos, and each lecture video is anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes in length. Um, these videos, first of all, it took me a really long time to make these videos. These vi creating these videos was an immense amount of work for me. <laughs> um, they're not that old. I've been using them for almost two years now, so the content is still pretty fresh. I'm about ready to make some new ones, unfortunately. Um, but the thing about these videos that you have to realize is that the f ones from the first three chapters, chapters one, two, and three, <laughs> they're not very good. Um, they're just, they're, they're awful uh, because uh, I, I was still trying to figure out how to make videos at that time. As you can see now, I'm all professional, you know, I mean, I have a camera and a little microphone and, and, and uh, I've figured out, uh, I've learned a lot about how to make, about video production in the last few years. Um, but, uh, those first videos in, from chapters one, two, and three are just not good. They're very, they're, they're, so, and, and I know they're not good, but it's, like I said, make, remaking them is just a lot of work, so I haven't had a chance to. You can still see them. You can hear them perfectly well. You can see them perfectly well. It's just they're, look, they're very amateurish looking. <laughs> so I think chat, from chapter three on, they, get, they do get better. Uh, there's, you know, the, the slides are easier to see, and you can see me there in the corner. Um, so there's that. So please be advised of that. You know, be advised that there are, you know, there was one time when I had to make some videos when I was, I was with my son on a golfing trip <laughs> and he was, and I was sitting in like this golf clubhouse and there was all these kids running around and you, and you can hear like all the people in the background at one point when I'm making these videos. Um, so, you know, there's that, right? Um, you know, just please, you know, bear in mind that, uh, you know, um, my intent was to try to give you um, as much of an experience of a college lecture as possible because you're paying, actually I think you're paying more money for this class than you would an online or, or a real face-to-face -face class. So, I mean, you're paying a lot of money for this class and I want to make sure that you get as, you know, the, the benefit of, of having a professor who knows what he's talking about as much as possible. Um, the other thing about the videos is that um, none of you have probably ever had me for a class before. Um, some of you may have, but I, I kind of doubt it uh, because I haven't taught Introduction to Psychology or Experimental Psychology in a while. I'm, t I'm teaching Experimental Psychology this semester, it turns out. But since I haven't been teaching either of those courses in a while, um, none of you have probably had me for a professor before. So I will tell you this right now. Um, 
I tend to uh, I, I tend to use sometimes some salty language in my lectures. <laughs> So I will say fuck and damn and, you know, some, you know, dirty words like that. Um, so I just want to let you know. Um, and I tend to make, sometimes I'll make crude jokes, uh, you know, but the reason for that is because, um, you know, I'm trying to uh, get you to remember stuff. I'm trying to make it inter as interesting as possible. And, and one of the ways that I have done that that I have learned that works for me as a lecturer in, in 30 years of lecturing is, is to be funny, you know, to try to be funny. Um, and by and large, 99% of students love it and appreciate it, appreciate my lecture style and, 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 and uh, that I go out of the way to try to make, th to try to connect you to the topics. There's going to be, there's going to be one or two of you that uh, don't like it. And I think the, the, the usual feedback that the one or two of you will give me is that it does, it's not professional. <laughs> it's not professional language. And, you know, my, my response to that is usually, hey, you know what, we're at we're, we're college. Okay, we're not, we're, we are not in a professional workplace. College is not a professional workplace. Okay, it, it is a place for learning. It is a place for for learning new things and getting your views challenged. So, um, you know, and I have found that the way to get people to learn and, and respond to new things is to communicate in a certain way. Uh, believe me, I know about professional education. That's what I do for my other job at IBM is I, I do training and education and research for um, for all of the IBM Watson artificial intelligence products. So I have to give lectures to adults in professional corporate settings. And believe me, the language differences in those settings and between my college settings are very different <laughs> uh, for obvious reasons. That is a very professional setting and you have to be very careful about what you say and how you say it. College is different. College is different. College is a is a, uh, uh, a place for raw learning. You're not trying to get a job done. Your job is to learn. Your job is to acquire information, absorb information, understand it, and use it. And there are many, many, many different ways for doing that, for understanding that. Each person comes up with their own method for teaching, and each person comes up with their own method for acquiring information. Um, so that's my method. And it works. It works pretty well. So, um, but again, you know, uh, if you're offended, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to offend. Um, but uh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's just that there's some very, very sensitive people out there. Um, so the lectures are there. The, the first few are not very good. Uh, the lectures are, each chapter is covered by five to seven lecture videos. Um, and each of the videos is anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes in length. I, and I broke them up like that so that you could watch them in little chunks. Uh, so, and you can watch them, since you're on, they're on YouTube, you can watch them on your phone or, or whatever you need to do. Um, now, the thing about the videos, the other thing about the videos that you need to be aware of is w one of the most hilarious comments that, um, that professors hear in from students is that, well, we had to read the book. <laughs> we had to read the book to pass the class. And, you know, I'm, I'm always like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of part of the thing. And for, uh, for, uh, for a significant number of students, I think a lot of, uh, some of you think that um, it should be okay to just get by with the lecture and not read the book or that the lecture should be, um, uh, well, I've heard both. I've heard that the lecture should be uh, parroting the book, and then I've heard that the lecture should be a complete different topic other than the book. You know, so you should cover stuff in the lecture that's not in the book, and stuff that's not in the book should be covered in a lecture. So here's what I do. Um, my lectures are intended to be a basically covering the the most important, difficult to understand concepts in each chapter. So, 
I do not go point by point through the whole chapter, uh, nor do I cover uh, much of anything outside of each chapter. So if you look at my lectures, they are going to be obviously related to what's in each chapter. You're going to see the same concepts in the lectures as in the chapter. The difference is that what I'm trying to do in each lecture is explain the concepts to you in a way that's different than what's presented in the chapter. So that you can have a couple of different ways of looking and thinking about that information. Because uh, different people get information in different ways. Some people can read everything and they get it. Some people can hear things and they get it. But most people need to hear and read things and put things together and use them on their own. That is the best way to learn. Uh, particularly for this class, it's the best way to learn is to use the information by combining uh, the basic concepts that you learn in the lectures and then use that to inform how you understand what you're reading in each chapter. Um, so that's, that's my approach. That's my approach. So yes, you're going to see overlap between the chapters and the lectures. Uh, but that's intentional. That's, that's the purpose of that is because I'm reinforcing what's in the chapters and trying to explain things in a different way. Um, so let's go now to the middle of page two on the syllabus uh, policy on exams. Uh, all of the exams will be given on Blackboard, so there's no need to come to UTSA. Um, each of the exams has a completion date when it's due, and you will go over that in the, at the end of uh, the, the syllabus. Um, now here's the important thing that you need to remember. All of the exams, you can only do them, attempt them one time. So once you start an exam in Blackboard, that's it. You have got to complete it in that sitting. You can't start an exam, then save it and come back later. It, once you start it, you have to finish it. You're going to be given 90 minutes to finish each 65 question exam. So when you start an exam, make sure you've got the 90 minutes. Make sure that nobody's going to bother you. Make sure that you know your computer's updated and it's not going to reboot on you. Make sure that you got a good internet connection, all that stuff. Um, one thing I do want to point out uh, is that, um, again, that uh, technical difficulties do happen. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, um, some of you will experience, for example, uh, uh, your browser randomly kicking you out of Blackboard, or Blackboard kicking you out, or your internet connection dying, or your computer rebooting itself, and then, you know, you're, you're kicked out of the exam. These things do happen. Uh, there's going to be a few of you that experience that. If that happens, First of all, don't freak out. Don't worry about it. Um, it happens all the time, and I deal with it. And the way I deal with it is this. As soon as it happens, what you need to do is just send me an email. Say, hey, Dr. Lopez, uh, you know, I was taking the exam, and, when, and it kicked me out. When I tried to go back in, it said it was already done, and I'm screwed. <laughs> and I only answered four questions, and, you know, that's it. So, uh, first of all, don't worry about it. Uh, send, me, send me an email with as much details as you have of what happened. Uh, what I'll do is I'll open up Blackboard and I'll look to see if uh, the details you give me match what Blackboard says. And all the time they do. Usually you know, very few people lie to me, which is nice. Uh, then if, if everything looks uh, kosher, then what I'll do is I'll just uh, reset the exam. And then you can take it again. You can just t attempt it again. If the due date has already passed, don't worry about it. Uh, I will say, hey, get this exam done, you know, within the next 24 hours or something like that. So there's not a lot of, pr you know, I don't want to put a lot of uh, undue pressure on you due to technical difficulties, in other words. So don't worry about it. We will handle it as it happens. Um, you know, obviously, some people try to push those, uh, push my being nice, and I'll push back. <laughs> but if you're honest with me and, and, and let me know what happened, um, that's all I ask. Just be honest with me, and I will definitely work with you uh, to, to fix things. So don't worry about it. Um, the grading system at the bottom of page two. Uh, you, so you're going to have four exams, uh, each one. 
is going to be 65 questions. You will have 90 minutes, an hour and a half to complete each one. Each one is worth 25% of your grade. So each exam is worth 25% of your grade. Pretty simple, straightforward. No extra credit will be given and no late exams will be given or, or make, I should say makeup exams because you don't need them because you can take these exams uh, anytime you want to before the due date. Uh, at the bottom of page two, if you are a um, student that utilizes the wonderful services of, of Student Disability Services, um, they are awesome. S uh, uh, SDS is awesome here at UTSA. They do a really great job of helping folks out. Um, so if you, if you do utilize those services, uh, I will get an email and I will uh, uh, make some provisions for you in Blackboard uh, based on uh, based on the uh, instructions I received from SDS. So, academic dishonesty, that's a very complex topic. Um, it's a tough topic to talk about with an online class because like we never see each other and I don't know what you guys are doing. Um, my understanding is that a lot of cheating does go on <laughs> with online, online tests. Um, it's actually pretty easy to detect who's cheating and who's not, who's using uh, answers and who's uh, not doing it. It's fairly easy to detect that on the, pat the pattern of responding. Um, so all I ask is that you do not cheat because <laughs> You know, there's not a lot we can do um, ahead of time to prevent it. But all I ask is that you do not um, uh, take this course in an on and and, and uh, in an honorable fashion, uh, and do your best and just try to learn something, uh, because the uh, the uh, penalties for academic dishonesty at UTSA are not pleasant. Um, th it's not good for you. <laughs> it's definitely not good for you. So. Just take this course and try to be as honorable as you can. Uh, that was page three. The last page of the uh, syllabus is page four. And at the top of page four, you'll see dropping the course. Um, hopefully, you won't have to drop the course. Uh, people have to drop cor the uh, courses for various reasons. Um, usually, none of them are good. Um, so I hope none of you have to have that experience, but I would really like if you would just write down in your calendar, the, uh, go to ASAP, find out the last day to, drop, to withdraw from a course with a W and write that down in your calendar because you never know. It's good to be prepared in case, you know, you know God forbid something should happen. You'll be prepared and you'll know, you'll know that right away and you can, and you can deal with things uh, much more easily if you know uh, what the dates are. So just make, make a note of that and, and just be prepared. So let's go now to the course calendar, um, at the, um, page four. Uh, the course calendar is pretty simple um, in this class. Um, it's, it only has the due dates for the four exams. So as you can see there in the middle of page four in the syllabus, um, exam one covers chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and it is due on 17 February. Exam 2 covers chapters 5 through 8, and it is due on 10 March. Exam 3 covers chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12, and uh, that exam will be due on 14 April. And then finally, exam 4 uh, covers only three chapters, 13, 14, and 15, and it's due on 8 May. So you've got all the dates here, so you can plan accordingly. Uh, now these are due dates. If you go, um, well, I'll show you, but uh, in in Blackboard. But right now the um, exams are all there. There you can start taking them whenever you want, uh, but you have to have them completed by these due dates. Um, so as long as you do that, you're you're good. Also, each one of these dates, I believe, is a Saturday, uh, Saturday night, and so. And if you'll see there underneath the course calendar, you'll note that all of the exams are due those days at 11.59 p.m. So <laughs> one Saturday a month is going to be jacked up <laughs> for this semester with you uh, completing <laughs> the test for this class. And then finally, um, there's a link there, or several links there in the, at the end of uh, the syllabus to important websites for this class. What I want you to do now is to go to that first link. Um, just let, real quick, let's take a quick look uh, at the um, 
at the Blackboard site. So go ahead and, and, and uh, open up your uh, web browser on your computer or on your, uh, on your device and go to uh, utsa.blackboard.com. And uh, once you go to the Blackboard website, log in. And after you log in, click on the link for, the, um, for this course. Psych 3153, Sensation Perception. And once you have clicked on that link, you should see the, uh, you know, the opening page for this class. And over on the left-hand side, you'll see a link for content. So if you click on that content link, you should see uh, a listing of links in the main section there on the right-hand side uh, for all of the content for this class. The first link uh, under content would be the link for this video. So obviously you have found that <laughs> um, and it's on it, it it takes you to a um, a YouTube uh, site where I have uploaded this video the next link takes you to a separate website that has the all of the actual content for this course so the separate website will take you to a link that will take you if you click on that link uh, it'll open up a very simple looking page it's a very it's a, it's a just text and I, I use this site for many reasons. Um, it's just easier for me to manage and the text uh, site is easier for uh, people with disabilities to uh, read that text site. Um, so one of the links on that text site that you see there, if you, if you click on, the, uh, um, uh, on that link in Blackboard, it takes you to that site. Uh, you'll see a link for 2018 Spring, which will take you to uh, the syllabus. Um, you also see a link there for the videos, lectures, and the slides. If you click on that link, it takes you to all of the video lecture playlists and all of the slides that you can download and follow along with. Um, if you go back to Blackboard, go back to Blackboard, go back to the content area, the, the, uh, another of the links that you see there in the content area is the link for the forums and this is a, a discussion forums where you can go in and I want to use these or I'd like for you guys to use these to organize discussion groups so put out you know put put out a call and say hey um, you know I'm planning on taking exam two on, uh, uh, nine, on the Friday the March the 9th or March the 10th I'm, I'm planning on taking exam two on the last day that it's due Anybody else doing that? Does anybody else want to get together and study together? Uh, and if you can get at least five of you together in one place, uh, I would be happy to show up and um, uh, um, answer questions about the content. Um, so at least five of you, uh, and five is an arbitrary number. If it's four, you know, that's fine. <laughs> but I picked five just because I didn't want to be having like little onesies and twosies all over the place. I'd like for you to try to get together and have at, at least five people, uh, you know, the, the, so we can talk. And it doesn't have to be on campus. We can meet anywhere. Um, I actually, uh, I, I actually, uh, for my job, uh, for IBM, I actually work at home. So I'm, I'm at home working. And then uh, I also teach at the uh, I also teach uh, two classes at the uh, at Texas A&M San Antonio, which is way the hell down south, <laughs> way down there. So I'm around. I, I I'm about I'm about and around um, town. So I don't mind you know meeting someplace other than campus. So anyway, if you want to use those forums to organize yourself a group. Uh, you can study together, and if you want uh, me to show up and, and, and uh, go over some content with you, I'd be more than happy to do that. You have to email me, though. Once you get your group together, uh, send me an email so we can communicate and set something up. Um, the other link that you'll see there on the uh, Blackboard site is the link for the exams. So if you click on the exams link, you will see um, all four exams, and they're there ready for you to take. Uh, please recall, though, that uh, you can only take them one time. So once you start it, uh, you have to finish it. You can't save it and come back. Uh, you've only got 90 minutes to answer 65 multiple choice questions. And if you do experience, and you have to finish it all in one sitting, in one 90-minute sitting. And if you have any problems with the um, technical problems, just you know, uh, send me an email documenting what happened, and we'll, we'll work it out. Uh, that's about it. 
if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Um, please make note of my office hours if you want to stop by. Uh, if, if you are, oh, by the way, one last thing. If you, are gonna, if you do really want to come see me during office hours, send me an email and let me know. Because uh, quite no one ever comes to office hours. <laughs> And, and sometimes I'll just go, ah, screw it. I'm not going to go because no one ever shows up. Um, and then every now and then somebody will show up and I didn't and I'm not there. Or I left early or something. So if you do want to come see me during office hours and if you know you're going to be there on that particular day, Tuesday or Thursday, drop me a note and say, hey, Dr. Lopez, I'd like to come by your office. Uh, and, and let me know so I can definitely be there. And if those office hours don't work for you uh, for whatever reason, because um, you have to work or whatever, uh, send me a note and we, we, we can set up a time uh, for whenever, you know, whenever you're available. Um, we can do that. Uh, that's about it. So good luck and um, I hope you learned something. Take care.